Hello Year 5, let's begin Lesson 17 of your Destination Reader Sessions. Remember your keywords are in red, questions for you to answer are in blue and writing time is in green. Please check you have a copy of the story, a strategy prompt sheet, a pencil and a piece of paper or your home learning book. Press pause now, make sure you have all of these things and then press play once you're ready to begin. Let's have a think about why good readers make inferences. Good readers make inferences by looking for clues in the text to help them understand more. Authors sometimes leave key information out so that the reader wants to keep reading to find out more. We're going to have a look at our vocabulary for today. Heroine. Heroine. Which is a woman admired for her courage, outstanding achievements or noble qualities. Exploit. Exploit. Which means to make full use of and derive benefit from. Amphibian. Amphibian, which is an animal that lives both on land and in water, for example, frogs, toads and newts. And we're going to come across an amphibian in today's chapter. Gruesome, gruesome, which means extremely unpleasant. This week, I'm going to continue asking you one mark two mark and three mark questions. Make sure you look carefully at how many marks each question is worth. Remind yourself now what answer a one mark, two mark and three mark question need. You can make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book and press play once you're ready to continue. Well done. A one mark question requires a short, snappy answer. A two mark question requires an answer with a point and a piece of evidence. And a three mark question requires an answer with a point, a piece of evidence and an explanation. Well done if you managed to get all of those. We're going to begin our chapter for today. We're on page 128 and our chapter is called Lavender. I will read and you will follow along. We will stop at certain points to give you time to make inferences. Remember, you can also use your ruler to follow along if this helps. In the middle of the first week of Matilda's first term, Miss Honey said to the class, I have some important news for you, so listen carefully. You too, Matilda, put that book down for a moment and pay attention. Small, eager faces looked up and listened. It is the headmistress's custom, Miss Honey went on, to take over the class for one period each week. She does this with every class in the school, and each class has a fixed day and a fixed time. Ours is always two o'clock on Thursday afternoons, immediately after lunch. So tomorrow at two o'clock, Miss Trunchbull will be taking over from me for one lesson. I shall be here as well, of course, but only as a silent witness. Is that understood? Yes, Miss Honey, they chirped. A word of warning to you all, Miss Honey said. The headmistress is very strict about everything. Make sure your clothes are clean, your faces are clean and your hands are clean. Speak only when spoken to. When she asks you a question, stand up at once before you answer it. Never argue with her, never answer back, never try to be funny. If you do, you will make her angry and when the headmistress gets angry, you had better watch out. You could say that again, Lavender murmured. I am quite sure, Miss Honey said, that she will be testing you on what you are meant to have learnt this week, which is your two times table. So I strongly advise you swat it up when you get home tonight. Get your mother or father to hear you on it. Let's have a look at question one. How do you think that the children are feeling about Miss Trunchbull taking their lesson? For two marks, say your answer out loud and then make a note of your answer on your piece of paper or your home learning book 
and press play once you're ready to continue. I think that the children are feeling apprehensive about Miss Trunchbull taking their lessons because they know that the headmistress is strict about everything and I've used quotation marks directly from the text to back up my point. Well done if you thought something similar and also used a piece of evidence to back up your point. Let's continue. What else will she test us on, someone asked. Spelling, Miss Honey said. Try to remember everything you have learnt these last few days. And one more thing, a jug of water and a glass must always be on the table here when the headmistress comes in. She never takes a lesson without that. Now, who will be responsible for seeing that it's there? I will, Lavender said at once. Very well, Lavender, Miss Honey said. It will be your job to go to the kitchen and get the jug and fill it with water and put it on the table here with a clean empty glass just before the lesson starts. What if the jug's not in the kitchen? Lavender asked. There are a dozen headmistresses' jugs and glasses in the kitchen, Miss Honey said. They are used all over the school. I won't forget, Lavender said. I promise I won't. Already, Lavender's scheming mind was going over the possibilities that this water jug job had opened up for her. She longed to do something truly heroic. She admired the older girl, Hortensia, to distraction for the daring deeds she had performed in the school. She also admired Matilda, who had sworn her to secrecy about the parrot job she had brought off at home, and also the great hair oil switch which had bleached her father's hair. It was her turn now to become a heroine. If only she could come up with a brilliant plot. Let's take a look at question number two. Why do you think Lavender wanted to be responsible for the jug of water and the glass for two marks? Say your answer out loud and then make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book and press play once you're finished. Let's take a look at my answer. I think that Lavender wanted to be responsible for the jug of water and glass because she wants to play a trick on Miss Trunchbull. The text says it was her turn to become a heroine which suggests that she wants to be admired like other children at school for devising a plot against Miss Trunchbull. I've made my main point, explaining why I think Lavender wants to be responsible. I've backed it up with evidence, using a quotation from the text, and I've explained what this suggests. It also uses one of our key vocabulary words for today, heroine. Well done if you have done the same, and you have a similar answer, or even if your answer is completely different, as long as you have used point, evidence and explanation, you would achieve three marks. Let's continue. On the way home from school that afternoon, she began to mull over the various possibilities. And when at last the germ of a brilliant idea hit her, she began to expand on it and lay her plans with the same kind of care the Duke of Wellington had done before the Battle of Waterloo. Admittedly, the enemy on this occasion was not Napoleon. But you would never have got anyone at Cruncham Hall to admit that the headmistress was a less formidable foe than the famous Frenchman. Great skill would have been exercise. Lavender told herself, and great secrecy observed if she was to come out of this exploit alive. There was a muddy pond at the bottom of Lavender's garden, and this was the home of a colony of newts. The newt, although fairly common in English ponds, is not often seen by ordinary people because it is a shy and murky creature. It is an incredibly ugly, gruesome looking animal, rather like a baby crocodile, but with a shorter head. It is quite harmless, but doesn't look it. It is about six inches long and very slimy. With a greenish gray skin on top and an orange colored belly underneath, it is, in fact, an amphibian, which can live in or out of water. That evening, Lavender went to the bottom of the garden determined to catch a newt. They are swiftly moving animals and not easy to get hold of. She lay on the bank for a long time waiting patiently until she spotted a whopper. Then, using her school hat as a net, she swooped up and caught it. She had lined her pencil box with pond weed ready to receive the creature but she discovered that it was not easy to get the newt out of the hat and into the pencil box. 
It wriggled and squirmed like quicksilver, and apart from that, the box was only just long enough to take it. When she did get it in at last, she had to be careful not to trap its tail in the lid when she slid it closed. A boy next door called Rupert Entwistle had told her that if you had chopped off a newt's tail, the tail stayed alive and grew into another newt ten times bigger than the first one. It could be the size of an alligator. Lavender didn't quite believe that, but she was not prepared to risk it happening. Eventually, she managed to slide the lid off of the pencil box right home and the newt was hers. Then, on second thoughts, she opened the lid just the tiniest fraction so that the creature could breathe. Let's have a look at our third question. What do you think Lavender is going to do with the newt for two marks? Say your answer out loud and then make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book and press play once you're ready to continue. I think that Lavender is going to put the newt in Miss Trunchbull's glass of water because she was eager to be responsible for it. And Miss Honey has made it clear that having water on her desk is important to the headmistress. Well done if you have made a point and you've used evidence from the text. The next day, she carried her secret weapon to school in her satchel. She was tingling with excitement. She was longing to tell Matilda about her plan of battle. In fact, she wanted to tell the whole class, but she finally decided to tell nobody. It was better that way because then no one, even when put under the most severe torture, would be able to name her as the culprit. Lunchtime came. Today it was sausages and baked beans. Lavender's favourite, but she couldn't eat it. Are you feeling all right, Lavender? Miss Honey asked from the head of the table. I've had such a huge breakfast, Lavender said. I really couldn't eat a thing. Immediately after lunch, she dashed off to the kitchen and found one of the Trunchbull's famous jugs. It was a large, bulging thing made of blue-gazed pottery. Lavender filled it half full of water and carried it together with a glass into the classroom and set it on the teacher's table. The classroom was still empty. Quick as a flash, Lavender got her pencil box from her satchel and slid open the lid just a tiny bit. The newt was lying quite still. With great care, she held the box over the neck of the jug and pulled the lid fully open and tipped the newt in. There was a plop as it landed in the water. Then it thrashed around wildly for a few seconds before settling down. And now, to make the newt feel more at home, Lavender decided to give it all the pondweed from the pencil box as well. The deed was done. All was ready. Lavender put her pencils back into the rather damp pencil box and returned it to its correct place on her own desk. Then she went out and joined the others in the playground until it was time for the lesson to begin. We've come to the end of our chapter, so let's have a look at our final question. Why do you think Lavender made sure that everything was in place before playtime to three marks? Say your answer out loud and then make a note of your ideas on your piece of paper or in your home learning book and press play once you are finished. I think that Lavender made sure that everything was in place before the lesson because she wants to make sure that she does not get caught. The text says that Lavender returned her pencil box to the correct place, which shows that Lavender is being careful to cover her tracks so that Miss Trunchbull does not guess that she has played a trick on her. I've made my main point of why I think that she's done this. I've backed it up with evidence using a quote from the text. And I've also written what it suggests or what it shows. Well done if you've done the same. Tomorrow we will continue reading. It will be our final lesson on making inferences. On your piece of paper or in your home learning book, write anything else that you could infer from today's lesson.